Alrighty, welcome back to another session on how to hack. And officially today we'll be starting with the web application hacking. And um, this is going to be great and fun at the same time. Um, I will have the first session of this lab uh, where we will see how we can um, more or less bypass access control by exploiting access control vulnerabilities. Then um, we will see how we can, from that exploits, have access to uh, restricted areas in the web application where we shouldn't have access to. Or even go all the way back to the web server to see if we can dump the security measures that has been set up to reveal creds or credentials. Um, then also, um, Quite a few around um, dev will be, might get our hands dirty, um, more or less writing some codes, depends if time allows me, because I, I plan to make this pretty short. And um, that will be it for the session. Then um, for this series, uh, let me quickly get into the box. I've set up a brand new Ubuntu. Um, like you know, I just set up new boxes like every other day. <laughs> so this is the latest version of Ubuntu. 2021.8.1. So I'm going to authenticate if I remember my password. Mm, as usual. Great, so I do. All right, so this is the box. Now, what you can see here is the Ubuntu box. And on the Ubuntu box, I'm hosting a server. I'm hosting a server. This is the server. It's the web good server. Uh, this is actually um, debugging. So I started the server using a Docker instance. A pretty fun, easy and stuff to do using Docker anyways. And um, running on port 8080. So um, this is similar to what you find in all the exercises that we've looked at. But then we were using a Windows server. And on the Windows server we have services. But here we're using a Docker container and um, on the Docker container, we're hosting a web server and um, we are assessing the server based on the ports that we've configured to run on our local host using Docker. So if I go to my browser, or before I go to my browser, I've also set up Burp Suits. We'll be using Burp Suits. Uh, some of the sessions will work with Burp Suits, some of the sessions will work with Zap. That's because I'm using the um, um, community edition of Burp Suits. And there are some restrictions when we get to a point where we have to maybe be doing some brute forcing or maybe be forcing. I'll refer back to the Zap or Zap to pretty cool to a neat tool to use also. So I don't have it on Ubuntu, but I have to install it just like I installed Burp and every other thing that I'm using here. So the Burp has been configured to be a proxy. Uh, if I open the browser, you will see that Burp is proxying. I set it up using this little nifty tool called Foxy Proxy. So Burp Suite is proxying for every request in and out uh, from this browser. The browser specifically from the browser. So please note that. So which means anything anybody does on this browser, Burp actually intercepts and um, logs that traffic. Now I could set up Burp to intercept real time until I'm able to inject and replay which we'll see as we go on in the course uh, but uh, for most times i'll leave it running in a passive mode so i can go back and review the captures and do what i want to do but for sometimes i will have to set it up in active mode so we'll see that as well and uh, moving on for this um, web good application as you can see i am assessing it using the local host 8080 web goods then the login.mmvc so you can see they're giving us by default these two users, admin and the uh, normal guest user, guest guest. Uh, trust me, there is another user which is not being shown here. So maybe when we start doing some fun stuff, we'll look at that user. So I'm going to authenticate. Just for demo, I'll use the admin purpose. You can use any of these accounts. So I'm going to authenticate to the server using the admin credentials, which is actually web goods and web goods. So let's see, just like any other browser, so you see I'm authenticating, great. If I go back to the logs from the server, you will see, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, you will see that 
an admin has actually authenticated see that's what it's showing you if you go maybe a step back you'll see uh, where the last user logged out uh, where's the logouts yeah that's pretty much a lot I don't want to go all the way back but I just want to show you the server is, log is keeping logs telling me someone authenticated and the person using the admin role authenticated it will even give me sweet, sweet little details around the authentication mechanism maybe the, the user agent of the browser that the admin used to log in and other stuff uh, that happens for almost every web servers that are co correctly configured. It keeps track of activities on the server. A second. So great. Now we've seen this. If I also go to Burp and maybe look at HTTP history, if I go all the way to the top, you will see that there was a post request. So if I look at this post request, maybe this is where we'll be starting to get our hands dirty. I don't know if you can see this or it's pretty small. Let me see if I can make it bold. Uh, probably try 18. If that will help. So let's go back to the proxy. Ah, it didn't change. <laughs> so I'm not sure why it didn't change. Uh, if I can adjust that font size. Okay, so if you look at this pane where we have the request that was sent, you will see that it's a post request. It goes to the web goods JSpring security check. So which means there is a JSpring security check on the server that checks for access based on credentials entered by the user. So I enter the credential, then it's taking me to that JSpring security check. Then we will see uh, 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 pretty much around HTTP, some of the basics you need to know. Uh, there are several HTTP methods which uh, uh, web servers or web, app web application actually work with. And um, that's pretty nifty cool because it can guide you as to uh, um, how to hack these things. So take for instance, if you look there, you will see it's a post method that is being used there. So a post method is you are imputing to the server. If you look at the proxy somewhere up here, you see there are get methods. So initially the welcome page was retrieved from the server via the get request method. Then we are sending details to the server using the post. So you should know that. Now there are also HTTP response codes that you must pay attention to. So if you look at, for instance, this post request, we see we got the response from the server is 302 found. So HTTP requests code is something you might want to go dig up in Google and check. But when we see 302, 302 actually means found. If you see 200, it means OK. If you see 201, it means created. If you see 202, is accepted. 203, non-authenticated information. If you see maybe 204, no content, 205. Now you wonder how come I'm spelling all this out. You should know them if you're going to be working with web servers web application. If you see something like 404, that's something usually common. <laughs> I think I've seen that on one of the Facebook posts or so. And 404, and basically it's for the 4 down, when we see 400 down, it's usually a client error. If we're seeing 200, maybe 200 all the way down to 299, it's actually a success message. So you can see 200 is okay, 201 is created, 202 is accepted, 203 is non-authoritative information, 204 is no content, 205 is reset content. All these are actually success message. But three, the 300s are redirection. So redirection, usually it's used to take you from where you're entering the details to where the details will be verified, just like this. I entered my details here, then it took me all the way to the post spring, J spring security check, and it told me 302 found. So 300 is multiple, it's more like multiple choices. 301 is moved permanently. See, it redirects, but moved permanently. 302 is found. Then uh, 303, I think, is see others or so. 304 is something around modified. 305 is more like a proxy in the place. You can go on and on. Then for the 400s, they're actually client errors. So you can see 400 is bad requests. 401 is unauthorized requests. 402 is payment required. 403 is forbidden. Then 404 is not found. So maybe you're trying to browse a page and you see that 404, little 404 error jumps out. It's telling you page not found. It's a client-side error. 
not a server side error so you should know that if you're going to troubleshoot issues like that you should be looking at troubleshooting it from your end so which means you must check your your internet access if you have that you must check if there's a firewall restricting your connection you must check if there may be some ideas or ips's or some acls blocking your access to the internet so you should know that it's a client side error then going all the way to the 500s the 500s are the server side errors so if you see like 500 is internal server error if you see 501 is not in not implemented if you see 502 is bad gateway if you see 503 is service unavailable so that should guide you to understanding the response you're receiving so when you start looking at burp suit and you'll be seeing those codes like 302 now we know it's found great if i see 200 like you can see in this status code here up here you see a bunch of 200s meaning that what they are found right 200 meaning they're okay they're good 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 so but you see some maybe 30 just like i was showing you you might see some 302 you might see some mix up if i try to enter maybe something wrong you see the true and error at me and uh, let me just go demo that so let's go to the web application let's say we log out let's say we enter wrong credentials just to make this pretty little neat, nifty and fun so let's say we enter web goods as the username then we enter goods as the password let's see so let's go look at our bob and see what error was thrown at us i'll go all the way to the top you can see by my right the request number gives an idea with the request so i'll go all the way top so post i posted the wrong password 302 found the page was found then if i see the gets what is trying to fetch from the server so we can see you try to fetch the login page but it gave me 200 okay but obviously it was wrong whoa why mm, okay i'm just gonna cancel this for now <laughs> great okay so i've got into a problem there but don't worry get it continue with it so we can see uh, going back to our conversation we can see where the http response code coming remember just a quick brief again the hundreds are actually informational hundreds like hundred is continue 101 is switching protocol 102 is processing the 200s are the success information 300s are redirectional 400s are client error client error 500 are server errors so these are the five major classes or six mid five informational success redirection client error and server error five major classifications of this response code um oh excuse me i will urge you to go look up for google and check this response code it will really help you if you want to be a good hacker or a good penetration tester so moving on from here let's go back and authenticate with the correct credentials so it's web goods then password is web goods now if you need help as to setting up web goods i can set up a session where i'll show you how to set it up very easy using docker pretty easy if you're trying if you're trying to install it it's got a lot of complications but if you use docker it's just pretty sweet and smooth you can just get it up set up in less than 10 minutes like swiftly so i can help you if you need help just let me know we can set up a session to help you walk around setting it up then also setting up verb suits because you have to also download the verb certificates and it, set it up in your uh, let me show you there won't have been a way for us to go around this if we don't have verb certificates uh, 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 but the firefox browser based on security configurations will just block our request to tell us the page you're trying to visit is uh, malicious or there's a malicious certificate somewhere let me show you what i mean so i had to go to certificates and i had to install see so if i go scroll through my certificate if you're on a macbook it's not far-fetched from you what you do with keychain if you look at keychain on that keychain you will have to import the verb certificate into your root ca or your root key so it can be there and it will help you smooth connections so if i go all the way down you will see there are several certificates amazon uh, there are a bunch of them but let's look for burp 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 uh, uh, past d a b c 
Oh, it's burp, it's B. My God, what happened to my alphabet? <laughs> okay. Uh, I think it's called search.de. Let me let me see if I have it here. If I can find it, but I know I had to install it before I could have this smooth connections. But it's somewhere in there. I wish I could just use this keyword search. Uh, um, okay, might be impatient to go one by one, but if I had to go one by one after the other, you'll find it there. I had to import it into here by using the imports. Then, uh, let me see, it's not here. It's actually authorities, it's somewhere here. Uh, so you have to download the verb CA and you have to import it into Firefox for it to allow you, let me see if I have, if I still have that CA on my, computer or but maybe I deleted it. Uh, it was in my download folder. Oh, it's there. Search dot there. So you see, I had to import this. This is, if I maybe try to um, view it, you see it's Port Swigger. It's owned by Port Swigger CA. So expired date. Just like uh, what you know, if you've read the course material I sent, you probably would have seen certificates uh, uh, using the concept of either digital certificates or uh, public infrastructure PKIs and the PKIs is what's where this falls under so this is a certificate that is signed uh, 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 by a verified certificate authority and issued to Pert Swigger so which means the browser to an extent I can make the browser to trust this certificate so which means anything that is using the certificate the browser will not flag out or block you from trying to assess that now what hackers do, do most times they can grab these certificates and maybe clone it, or maybe even get a fake certificate that looks like this, and they will trick you to install this certificate. So which means everywhere you're going to, anywhere you browse to on your browser, they have access to anything you're doing because they issue that certificate to you. Great, but that's not what we're doing here today. I think I have to be pretty fast and just go out of here. So let's get back into scope. Now we're in the web application. So if you look at this, uh, you can read around, maybe just see if a little bit of the details. It's telling you, um, this is web goods. So great. Um, I'm going to go from the introduction. Um, I'm going to restart some of this. Or maybe I log in, let me log in with the other user. Sorry. Let me log in with, um, guests okay so let's log in with guests great so we're in um, I want to restart the whole session so we have it from fresh great so if you look at this this is what it has so what it looks like so we can see the application called WebGoods and um, a little bit of details you can read up just to understand what is happening. Uh, but our interest is to go on the sessions and see how we can take on some of the sessions. So uh, this is how it works. Uh, maybe when you set it up on your own, you can read it just to see. But if you look here, you see WebGoods uses the Tomcat, Apache Tomcat. Now this rings a bell in my head, which means I could go scan this server uh, uh, if I was on my Kali, I don't have any tool here to do that. If I was on my Kali, I would go scan the server and see if there are vulnerabilities on this server. Uh, uh, since I'm seeing Apache Tomcat, I will check if it's using uh, uh, um, the Apache Tomcat that is vulnerable to the Ghost Tom vulnerability. If you remember one of the videos I, I recorded, I used the Ghost Tom vulnerability. Uh, 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 so I could go check if this server is vulnerable to that. Now, if this web good server which is being hosted on a docker container is one of which that from exploiting the server i could gain remote code execution on the docker container that is hosting the server and uh, uh, in this case most likely it's my local host actually so uh, um, that's one thing that uh, uh, um, us hackers will look out for we check out for the version so you see, I'm just doing a little bit of enumeration. I can see there's Apache Tomcat server. That rings a bell in my mind. Uh, I could go down that rapid hole and it's not gonna end, trust me. It's just gonna keep digging and digging. So which means I know that there will be a Tomcat uh, configuration file somewhere which I could exploit to gain access to the uh, container hosting this server. 
Okay, moving on from there, uh, that's a little bit about these. There are lessons, that's what it's trying to tell us. So we can create users if we want to, but we're not doing that today. So let's quickly move on. Here again, some other explanation, detailed lesson creation instruction, but we're not doing any of this because I've actually got another lesson set up already. So if we're going to general, the first task we have there is the HTTP basic. So look at this. Now what is happening here is saying, enter your name in the input field below and press go to submit. The server will accept the request, reverse, accept the request. Um, give me a second, please. I shouldn't be doing this, but my phone is actually ringing out. Um, Okay, so uh, the server will accept the request, and it's telling us that the server will accept the request, reverse the input, and display it back to the user. So if you look at that, uh, we can try working around that. So let's, you see they are saying we can use the OWAPZ uh, attack proxy or the ZAP, what's called ZAP, but I, I have burp suit, so I'm going to be using burp suit. So let's get our hands dirty. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to um, enter my name. Oh, sorry. I'm going to enter my name. Then I'm going to set up the proxy to active intercept. So watch what happens if I press go. So if you watch what is happening, nothing is happening because the proxy had trapped the request. If I go into the proxy, so look at this. You can see, if you review this information here, you see what is happening. Um, I'm trying to post to where? I'm posting to web goods attack screen, um, HTTP 1.1, uh, local host. The user agent, very interesting, see? It tells me the user agent is a Mozilla uh, uh, on Ubuntu machine Linux. Gives me the Linux architecture. Then the Firefox version. Then all the way down, uh, it tells me the content type is an application X www form on URL encoded. So it's a form. So I'm posting from that form. Uh, the origin is coming from my local host, which is hosting the Docker instance. Then we can see the referrer, which was what we initially saw. Now there's a cookie. I could do a lot with this, but that's not what we're we'll getting into today. I just want to show you that the burp proxy is giving me clean details that I entered. So imagine if this was an attacker somewhere on your network with a proxy like this and listening for every communication on that network. So if you're entering your username and password, maybe you're on your bank application, the attacker will just sit there. He won't set up active uh, uh, um, proxying because if you're waiting and it's not connecting, sometimes the application will time out and um, cancel that connection. So he will set it in passive mode. So which means everything you do is locked. He can now go back and review it. He will see your username, your password, everything you did. Good. That's not what we're doing today. So I'm going to forward this and stop the proxy. Great. So if I go back here, you will see what happens. The server reversed my name. What I entered, it took it and it flipped it, reversed it. If I go back to my proxy, maybe I go look at the history. So let's see what came back from the server. So look at this, uh, was it this? Sorry, uh, not this, so let me clear all this, sorry. Okay, I'm going to go back and do that again. I'll enter, I'll just use this. Great, so let's go see the HTTP history. So we posted this and the server, we got a get from the server. Okay, so let's see what the server gave us. True, great. So what happens if, as an attacker, maybe I'm seeing, okay, all these little sweet details, then I grab this request that was sent to the server, then I send it to maybe a repeater. I want to repeat this activity. So I can come in here and maybe change the name that the user entered to another name, James, and send it back to the server and see if the server will give me a response. So look at what happens. I sent it to the server. I got what? Remember, 200 OK. 200 means that, yes, good, I have processed your information. 
Now, if you go all the way down, you will see the re response the server gave. Let's go look at that. So we will see that. Um, let me stretch this a bit. Sorry. So I can buy some space and make it easy to read. So which means uh, um, it's what's sent to the server and the server sends a response back. Now this might not seem or mean anything to you, but what if I go back, let me close this. What if I go back and this time around, I set the proxy to intercept that request. Then I go again and I play this. So this time around, I'm doing an active capture. So I go back to my proxy, then I change it right here. So let's say I change it to James. What's going to happen? Let's see. So I now forward the traffic. So let me stop this. Look at what happens. I didn't enter James here. Remember, I entered Benjamin here. The server gave me a flip of the name James, not Benjamin. So which means I had intercepted and injected. And the server could not prove or validate that request. It just took it as though it was coming from the user and process it. Now, this itself, it's a vulnerability. I was actually demoing, let me digress a bit. I was demoing something for a bank uh, uh, internal audit team. And this was what I was just doing. They have this payment application and I could intercept requests that I generated from my own account with them and replay the request from my proxy to the DR server the server had no way to validate that that request had been injected or not coming from the origin. Now, there are several ways you could prevent this when it comes to defense or pre uh, uh, prevention or detection. We'll get into that. So, we've solved the first challenge. See? Congratulations, you successfully completed this session. So, let's move on to the next session. Let's say we're done with that. Now, access control is the next session. So, the first tax here, let's go look at it. It's telling us what um, using access control matrix. So what do we have here? You see, in a role-based access control scheme, a role represents. Now, for those of us who know access controls, we know they are role-based, they are rule-based, and also you've got several classification under them. Where you see the mandatory, the discretionary, and a few others. So you could go dig up that and just to understand access control what they are. So this is a role-based scenario, so which means you have access based on your job role or your job function. Okay, that's not a good access control policy anyways, but let's not get into that for now. Now in a role-based access control mechanism, a role represents a set of access permissions and privilege. True, a user can be assigned one or more roles. That's where the problem or the vulnerability lies, because what if that user had actually moved within several departments, he will have several roles and several permissions. Bad, bad, bad uh, uh, access control policy. A role-based access control scheme normally consists of two parts, the role permission management and the role assignments. Now, a broken role-based access control mechanism or scheme allow a user to perform access that are not allowed. So in this lab, we want to see how we can exploit vulnerability in this broken role-based access control to assess, as it has been spelled here, assess or to perform access that are not allowed or that are not assigned to our role. So let's go to the lab quickly. So each user is a member of a role that is allowed to assess only certain resource. Your goal is to explore the access control rule that governs this site. Only the admin group should have access to account manager resource. So let's go look at that. Now, if we go all the way down, we see there are several users here, right? If we go all the way here, there are several resources. So they say only admin group can assess this. So let's go try out. Let's say we're playing as an attacker. I'll try with Mo first. Let's see if Mo can assess that resource. Um, user Mo did not have privilege. So you see that. But let's go to our proxy and see what happens behind the scene. So I'm going to go look at that request. Is it capturing it? It's not, it's not capturing it. Oh my God, what is wrong with my proxy? Okay, that's it, the post. So look at what happens. Oh, not this one, sorry. Um, okay, I'm going to clear this and try that out again from the start. I need to restart that proxy. So let me try again. 
obviously Mo cannot access uh, account manager resource. So if you go to the proxy, let's go look at what happens behind the scene. You see there was a post. So let's see, user is more, resource is account manager. And it checked access. So we got back a feedback which says what? Let's go look at this. Each, okay, um, our feedback. Um, give me a second. I'm going to take this and send to repeater. So let's look at it from here and see. Uh, Mo is assessing account manager resource. Let's play this. We got what? Um, okay, user Mo did not have privilege. You see that? Mo cannot access it. So we now know Mo ha doesn't have access. But let's go try another user. Let's try Mo to access maybe public share. Oh, Mo was allowed to access public share. That's pretty smooth and nifty, easy, cool. Uh, how about another share? Time card entry. Oh, Mo don't have access. Okay. How about I want to try a different user, Larry. Let's see Larry. Larry have access to this. How about Curly? Let's go try account manager. Does it have access? Oh, it does not have access. So let's go back to Larry and try account manager because they've told us what we want to do is account manager. Can Larry assess this? Oh, great. So Larry can assess account manager. Pretty smooth. You see what is happening here? The vulnerability here is the fact that the user can see all the users in that web application and can also see all the accounts, all the shares, all the resources. Now you could argue with me that, uh, um, but what if the user doesn't see it? So if the user has not been defined to see this, if the user can enumerate the web application to find out all the users, he can replay the same action to find out which of those users have access to the account manager share because he's equipped with the proxy. Remember, each request that was initiated from that web application had been logged via the proxy. So the user can do that and see the response message that came from the server to tell if that user has access to the service. So we've passed that test. Let's move on to the next one. I'm going to clear this again just to get it fresh. Great. So let's go back to the next test. Now we've passed this. Congratulations. Let's see the next one. In this tax now, what are we asked to do? We're asked to do what? Bypass a path base. So there is a path base access control scheme. We want to see if we can bypass that path base. Now this might seem a little bit uh, uh, um, ambiguous or maybe difficult to do, but we'll play around with it. Now there's something called directory transversal. Directory transversal, which means a user that is authenticated can, if there is no proper directory listing configured on the web application, he can try to use certain commands to go back all the way to uh, an unauthorized uh, uh, resource on the server that that user shouldn't be able to access. That's what we want to do here. So let's look at this. Now they've told us that what? The guest user has access to all the files in the lesson plan. All these files. This guest user can access it. Look at this. He can view these files. Pretty smooth and easy. He can view any of this file. So what they're asking us to do now is they're saying, look at this. They say, um, let's look at the task. They're telling us that uh, after selecting a file to view, web go to report if access was granted. An interesting file to try to obtain might be. So they're telling us that this file, look at this file. It's not here among the list of files. So but we want to see if we can exploit the vulnerability to assess this file that is not here among the list of files and see if we can dump the resource in that XML file. So what we're going to do is we'll make this pretty easy for ourselves. We we'll set up the uh, uh, um, there is directory traversal. Remember, I told you we'll set up the proxy. Let me clear this up. I will set up the proxy in active mode. Then I will go here. I will try to access any of this. So I am intercepting it, which is here. Then right here, I can see 
The file is defined as what file open authentication dot html. So, but what they want us to access is what web inf spring security dot xml. So let's quickly copy this. I'm going to copy this, and I'll go to my proxy and see if I can replace it with this. Okay. So what I'm doing now is I've replaced that directory with a file in it. But because this file is not in the folder where all these are, if you look at this directory, you can see that there's the text track, web app, web good plugin, all the way down to lesson plan n. So but this file we're trying to access is not in this directory. But I know it's somewhere in the server. So what if I try to maybe use a directory transversal technique so this is what we do i put a dot back back uh, dot dot if you understand linux you'll know what this is i'm trying to go back to the previous directory so i'll try for the first second third fourth let me try now and see let me forward this request and see what happens if i go back here did it work uh access so you see denied so i'm not there yet but I can see that if I go back to the proxy and maybe look at the history, I posted this. The server gave me something. Bypass a path access control scheme. It gave me a hint. Uh, get all this gets. Okay, no, that's the old one. I posted this. So let me see. Access to this directory. Denied. Well, that's bad news, but not yet. What if we try to repeat this again and see what happens? So maybe I want to go back again. I'll clear this. Um, I'm clearing it because uh, uh, there's something wrong with the burp. You don't have to do that anyways. I'm just clearing the history so I can have a fresh history. And this time around, I intercept again. So let me um, try that again. I'll copy this directory that I want to go to. Then I go back to my proxy. So I replace this. Oh, sorry. Then I go all the way back. So I repeat my directory transversal three, four, five. Let me see what happens if I do this time around. I'm going to forward it. Then I'm going to just stop the intercept and go back here. Wow, look at this. It worked. So let's quickly go see what happens. HTTP history. So the posts. Um, where's that post? This is the old one. What is wrong with this proxy? This is the old one. Um, I have to do some settings here, sorry. That's the old one. But I, I actually, I think I have to repeat it again just so, let me clear this, I'm sorry. Mm. My glasses are failing me now. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna intercept this again and go back here and do this. And I'm gonna copy this. I have to go replace the glasses. And paste that here. Then we'll do our, our directory transversal. Five. Five step back. Then let's forward this. So let's see what came back. So we forwarded that. Uh, let's review this. We got a cookie set. We're not interested in this. Forward. And um, this is coming from where? Hangout Gmail. We're not interested in that. Um, great. And um, forward this. Not this. Forward this. Forward this. I cannot go back. Um, okay. 
no, let me just drop all this and go and see the HTTP history. So let's go look at this. Now see what happens. Congratulations access had been allowed. So if you look at this, let me see if I can squeeze this a bit backwards and squeeze this a bit forward. So look at the directory we went all the way back to. Look at this. Dot extract, web app, web goods, web INF, spring. So if you look at the spring security, we're dumping the content in that security. Let's go all the way down. I think we might find some useful information. Um, or we can even see that on the browser, I believe. Oh, great, it's there. So we can see what we're able to dump. We dump the content in the spring security. Uh, and um, we can go all the way down. We log in, username and password, seeing the way it's been configured to check for security. Then we're able to also dump this interesting user. So we didn't know there was a web goods user. We didn't know there was a server user with a password server. And their roles are defined. So you can see now we're revealing uh, uh, um, secure uh, content in that web application security configuration folder, which we did not have access to. What we've just done is we've stepped all the way back to dump this content. Now this is a flaw. We call it directly transversal vulnerability. Uh, uh, this shouldn't be allowed in in a web in any web application. You should you should block the user from trying to go back. If you have defined a clearly distinctive access control mechanism based on the files and based on the folders or the shares, the user shouldn't have been able to go, on, go all the way back without an access. It would have requested for a password if they had been configured to access it or it would tell them access denied. You don't have access to access. You don't have access to that directory. So moving on, we've solved this task. Let's see the next one. There is a... Uh, Interesting, bypass presentation layer access control. So in this case, what are we trying to do? As regular employee, Tom exploits weak access control. My glasses, oh my God, take it off. Weak access control to use the delete function from staff list page, okay? Verify that Tom profile can be deleted. Wow, this looks like a challenge. The password of the user are given and they are given names in lowercase. So which means if we're using the Tom account, his password is Tom in lowercase. So let's see. We we'll see all these users. I see there is this admin guy. By default, only admin should be able to delete someone's profile. So let's try. Let's say we log in with uh, Tom. Password as Tom. So Tom can only view his profile. Tom does not have a right to delete. He can view his profile. You can see this is a bank application. You can see Tom's profile, which is account details, credit card number, limits, and all this stuff. You can edit his profile. It's his profile, no problem. Okay, great, let's log out. So if we go maybe log in with one of the admin, like John. Let's see. John is an admin, so John should be able to delete any user's profile but they are telling us that we have to log in with Tom and delete Tom's profile so Tom is not an admin which means we want to use a non-admin account to perform admin function now there's only one way that will work out if that's if there is not if they've not configured a proper access uh, 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 sorry access right mechanism so which means there is a flaw in the access rights that have been defined. So which means we're bypassing a business layer access control because this is a business, more like a bank, financial stuff. So we're bypassing a business layer access control. Let's see how we can do that. Pretty nifty, uh, nifty stuff to do. So I'm going to log out. Now in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to enter login with Tom because we want to carry out the action with Tom. So let's log in with Tom. Tom's password. Then what we're going to do is we intercept this traffic. So. I'm going to uh, enter Tom's password, but I'm going to intercept this Tom's. If I go to the proxy first, let's go see some of our captures. We see, um, I'm not sure why my proxy is not cooperating with me today. <laughs> I have to maybe shut it down and start it up again. It's, it's not loading new, new requests. I don't know why that is happening. I don't know why that is happening to me. Maybe I should restart it. 
and um, sorry let me just close it down quickly uh, I know I can't do anything because that browser was, is connected to a proxy so let's go look for burp and start it up again it's it's misbehaving and I'm not comfortable with that I'll just delete everything a new project okay oh this glasses is bad oh my god it's trying to spoil my eyes <laughs> okay great and I've got my switch so um, let's see what this gives uh, Bob is trying to load up please hang on okay great so we have it up now we're going to see um, let's go to our proxy we'll switch off intercept let's see the history so once again what we want to do is we want to try random user Larry Larry I just want to show you something so let's try Larry Larry to login is the intercept on is intercept on intercept is off so why aren't we getting that uh, sorry uh, um, so let's try um, let's try more MOE let's try MOE and see and um, is this intercept on um, just give me a second okay so burp seems to be on scope definition nothing is there proxy um intercepts okay let me leave it on and see if i i will intercept this so maybe i need to switch it off and on again or i have to go check um to be sure that let me see that option oh yeah i think i know the problem so <laughs> Um, I'd configure this to run on ports 8081, not 8080. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, great. So now we should grab some sweet stuff. So let's try that again. Did I switch it on? Um, sorry. Uh, switch it off. Let's see what is set up here. Um, oh, whoa, 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 my browser crashed. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, sorry guys. Now I think I know my browser crashed. All right, so just give me a minute. That's bad news, you know. Your browser crashing in, in, a, in a live demo. Looks like the demo gods are not happy with you. <laughs> okay, so let's try it again. So we'll do more. I think we have our proxy set up now. Let's turn it on. Then let's set up intercept. I just want to see if it's working fine now. So we we'll do more and login. So I think everything is fine now. Uh, we didn't capture. Why? Mm, 80, 81. Mm, why didn't we capture? Intercept is on. See, Tom. Why aren't we capturing? And you know, I hate to troubleshoot in a live session. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to log out and restart the server. See, there's a problem with the proxy. So let's go see that. Um, where are you on here? You are on port 8081. So that is fine. And um, let's kill the server. Let's kill that server and start it again. Run it again. And um, okay, so it's loading and um let's verify 
we're going to try to log in again um, this video is pretty long now <laughs> okay so let's wait for this to load okay it's done so we're going to log in using this so let's go check that out now if we're good to go hmm why is the proxy the proxy service refusing connection well Bob sits what is oh is what is excuse me um, close that perhaps suits and uh, turn this off let me see without the proxy if we can assess the server oh without the proxy we can so there's a problem with burp suits so this is what troubleshooting looks like uh, thanks for your patience anyways it seems like we always run into these problems sometimes so i'm going to try to fix this um, so we can get back to a happy hacking. Some switch. Hmm. Hmm. Switch is fun. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly go check uh, the proxy. Fail to start proxy. Okay, great. So um, let's go see the setup. Edit this and change this to port 8081. Should bind on port 8081. And um, that should be fine now. Uh, great. So we're good. Our proxy is up and running. I believe so. <laughs> let's log in to test it. And uh, we'll set this up. Log in as um, guests. So let's see. Oh, great. So proxy is running now. Ah, uh, well, that's all about IT, you know. You, can, you just sometimes it just wants to drag the nuts, but you have to be patiently, patiently work with it. So I think we stopped um, at this. What task was it? This task. No, we're done with this task, but it didn't record our, our success. So we're going to just maybe do it again quickly. So we copy this. Then we set up the proxy to intercept live. Then we go in here, try to view this. Look at our proxy. Um, we replace this. Then we do our directory transversal trick backwards. Then we forward this. So we stop the intercepts and we can view this sweet stuff. So you're taking record. Now you can record your vulnerability and you can see that there is a problem with the access control mechanism or the logic behind the access control mechanism. Users can push all the way back to the server and reveal credentials that are very critical like this. So we pass this task onto the next task. We see there's a role-based access control set up here. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to bypass the business layer access control that is configured here. Let's see how quickly we can do this. So they have told us that Tom user had reported an issue. To, he can delete his profile. We want to verify that issue. So let's say we try this first with maybe um, um, we'll see admin John or Tom. That's Tom. So let's put Tom and see if uh, login. So Tom can only view his profile, can edit his profile, but there's no button to delete his profile, right? So great. So let's log out. So what we're going to do now is again, we're going to try logging again with Tom. Let's see. But this time around, we'll set up our proxy to intercept that in active mode. Then we're going to enter Tom's password. Let's go look at the background, the business logic that is happening in the background. 
So go to our proxy. We can see that Tom's employee ID is 501. So that is not being seen from the front end. So which means if I'm taking record, probably they've started giving employee ID from five, from 100, sorry, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105 is Tom. Great. So if I go back to that web application and maybe do something like, oh, I can't do that now because we, we're capturing. But I can see there's 105, Tom. That leaves a question in my mind. Tom's password is Tom. We can see that. Now look at this action bar. The action is trying to do is he's trying to log in, right? That's sweet, no problem. So we're going to allow this and let Tom log in. So what we're going to do now is let's try to view Tom's profile, but let's intercept that request. So let's try to view Tom's profile. Since we know there's an action bar, let's see what this will give us. This is giving us what? View profile. So what if I edit this right here on the fly and put deletes profile? Will it work? Do you think it'll work? Let's see. It's still Tom. Let's try and see if we can delete. Let's forward this. And let's go back. Wow, sweet. We just deleted Tom's profile just like that. So you see how that works. Pretty easy because we can see there is a flaw in the business layer access control configured for the users in that in that bank's uh, 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 um, database. So this is something that you might think is pretty easy, but trust me, in some organization, this problem is there, it's inherent, and they have no idea. This is where bug hunting comes in. You can actually hug for bonds, uh, uh, hunt for bugs, sorry, and reveal such flaws like this, uh, uh, which you trying to carry out actions that you shouldn't be able to do with just a normal user account. Great, so we've solved this task. Now moving on to the next one, we can see the next one. Let's. The next one is telling us that uh, for this we need to fix that problem. But to do this, we need the developer's version, and I've actually spent a lot of time, so I'm not going to go into this. I'm just going to show you something. Let's read the source code. Under the source code, let's try to go look out for where that action is being carried. If you go all the way down, I think you will see somewhere where it's defined. Query the database to determine if a given employee is owned by a given user. Um, not there. Let's see, we're looking at the source code for the profile data of a given employee. So look at this. So look at the way the strings that is being set up here. String query, select, this is if you know SQL, select start from employee where user ID is, or whatever plus the subject user ID. So if you look at all this point of the code all the way down, we can see that we could use other technique uh, uh, such as separating the, 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 the business layer access, the business logic layer from maybe the, the, the database logic layer in such a way that uh, a user with an ID should not be able to carry out function on the database without validating that ID. So which means if the ID does not have ad admin rights, shouldn't be able to carry out actions such as deletes in the database uh, where the profile is for a user if there are no admin rights associated to that user. So that could be fixed. If you look at this, uh, I think, um, see, do not get the password field. So which means when the user tries to carry out an action such as this, he does not require password to do that. That's a flaw. You can fix that by correcting that in the code base. That's what this task is actually asking you to do. I'm pretty much fast now. If I go to the next task, I can see in this task, we are doing what? We're breaking the data layer access control. Interesting. So as a regular employee, Tom exploits weak access control to view another employee's profile. Wow, this sounds sweet. So Tom is trying to view another employee's profile. Remember, Tom is not an admin. Tom is just a regular user. So Tom shouldn't be able to do this. So we want to see how Tom can carry out this kind of action, which he shouldn't be able to do by default. So this falls within the data layer because the profile, remember I told you, is stored in the database. So maybe the access control mechanism stores the ID. The data is stored in the data layer. Let's say user 101. 101's profile data is stored in the data layer. User 101, uh, um, user ID 101 would have been defined to be able to access his profile stored in the database based on his access that he has by logging or authenticating but shouldn't be able to access another user's uh, 
uh, uh, profile because he's not an admin except he's an admin to show you that if I grab uh, where is that task uh, why can't I follow them Larry's uh, is there a problem oh, sorry let me restart this lesson maybe there's a problem somewhere okay so what are they asking us to do um, Delete function. Verify that Tom profile can delete the password of users. Delete it. Can be deleted. Okay. Okay. Oh. Oh my God. It seems like this is crashing again. Please don't crash on me. Let me see. Go all the way back to two. One. Okay. Let's try to. Whoa, this is crashing again. Oh my God. Let me see if I can refresh this. <laughs> That's bad news. Okay. Don't crash on me. Uh, we solved the one. Um, let's see, two. Mm. This is crashing. And that's pretty sad. I don't want this to crash. Let's see, three. <laughs> okay. So, uh, exploit weakness to view another employee's profile. I cannot, oh, this is bad. Okay, there's a problem here. Let's try this with Larry, see if it will work. They specifically want us to use Tom. So Larry can view his profile. Okay, no problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to see if we can use Larry to view another person's profile. That's the task here. So we'll intercept and see uh, um, if we can do this. So let's intercept. Let's enter Larry. Then we're going to click login. And I'm going to forward this because I just want to authenticate. Great. Then I'm going to set up that intercept again. Then click on view profile. Then go to the intercept. So look at this. Um, the action here, employee ID here is 101. 101, remember we've seen 105. 105 is Tom. 101 is Larry, the first user there. The action is to view profile. So what if I change this to somebody else? Let's say uh, I do 111. Let's see if there's a user on 111. Let's forward this traffic and see what happens. Wow, look at that. We're viewing John's profile. <laughs> so remember, we were authenticated as Larry. But we're using Larry's authentication to view John's profile. That's because we saw there is a vulnerability in the way the application actually defines those control. If I go back to the proxy, maybe I can get the request. We saw that... Oh my God, don't tell me this is not capturing. Demo gods, what have I done? Don't do this to me tonight. The demo gods are upset at me. I'm going to redo this task. I just want to show you something. I'm going to redo this task. So now we can assess. Wow, interesting. Now we can assess. So let's go to Tom. Okay, great. So let's log in. So I begged them and they, 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 they forgave me. <laughs> so let's set the intercepts. And view profile. So I want to show you something. So look at this. It's using employee's ID. Now there are ways you could have done this. You could have probably defined a variable. So each time the user enters the details, it doesn't reveal the like the employee's ID, rather to show you the variable which will be pulled out from another database to get that user's ID and forwarded to the server, rather than showing you the user's ID here. So you could probably have prevented this if you had defined a variable, rather than allowing this to be revealed here, right on the web application. So anybody who does this mean that they've set a floor where someone can come in and make changes real time on the fly like I did I knew there's another user called 111 based on the 
con the, the, the user ID that has been assigned, or 102, or 103, 105, any of them I could use. I'm using 111, and I'm doing view profile. Trust me, I could do something else here, maybe delete profile, and it will work. Trust me, it's going to work. So but let me just show you view profile for now. I'm going to forward this and stop the intercept. See, I can view John's profile. This is John's account. That sounds pretty sweet, right? Okay, let's log out. Let's try and see if we can delete John's account. So we're going to use Tom. Tom is not an admin, he's just an employee. Let's see if we can use that to delete John's account. Then we're going to go back here. It said intercept on. Then we're going to view. This time what we're going to do is we want to go to 111, which we know is, um, um, what is it? John, yeah, 111. Then what we want to do is we want to delete profile. <laughs> Dangerous. Delete that guy's profile. Le uh, John is an admin. Tom's not an admin. We're using Tom's profile to delete an admin's account. So let's forward this. Does it work? Let's go check. Boom. I deleted the guy's account with a non admin's <laughs> account. As easy as that. Now, this is really, 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 really bad. It's like bad, 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 bad. Not good at all. Not good at all. So wherever is configuring the web application should not allow this happen. So if we go to our task, what we've been asked to do is to do what? We should do what? Uh, alter web scores code um, uh, tax three, which we've just completed. Oh, we didn't finish it yet. Let's finish it, okay. Uh, delete profile functionality. So we want to delete Tom's profile. That's the task here. So let's go to Tom. Oh no, to do this, we need to alter the web code. code. I'm going to three, task three, task four, task three. Yeah, this is where we want to delete the profile. So let's complete this task. Um, Tom. Tom. Login. Then set up our intercepts. Then we we'll view profile. Go to our intercepts. Then still Tom. Or we want to delete Tom. So forward this and let's go see that. And um, did we forward it? Uh, okay, let's try that again. Um, view profile. I want to delete. I believe that's what they ask us to do. Mm. Oh no, view another employee's profile. Okay, that's the task to view. So Tom is trying to, trying to view another employee's. Ah, okay, interesting. So let's go do that again. So I'm going to set up the intercept. I know there's a user 111. So let's view 111 profile great so we've completed a task by viewing someone else's profile great so that's the assignment for this task now all this shouldn't be happening if a proper maybe a, a less privileged access control has been defined uh, role based sometimes there's quite a number of overlooks that can result to issues like this so that's the caveat here. I think the video has stayed so long. I'm going to stop it at this point. Then the task four will not work because we need to get a developer version of this. We need to modify the code. But I'm going to show you what could probably uh, be done to fix this problem. We should have done a proper isolation. Isolation defines that we completely segment or segregate the business layer, which is where you find the employee ID. If I go back, maybe try this again just to show you, so it doesn't seem like I'm talking big, big grammar. That doesn't make sense. And uh, let's intercept this, let's view. So go back to this, so look at this. Where you see the employee's ID, that's usually uh, uh, within the business layer. Employee ID, employee uh, tag, all those fall within the business layer of the application. Then where you see the action, like the view profile here, 
the profile usually falls within the uh, 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 data layer because that is stored in the database. So they have not done a proper segmentation between the uh, business layer and the data layer. So it seems like they are both linked or they are both within the same code block. Now that is bad because any user that is within that code block can carry out actions without restrictions. So to prevent this, you could probably segment the business layer from the um, data layer. Let me show you. I think I have a sample uh, uh, um, code somewhere here. Let me see if it's in my bookmark. Do I have a page? Yeah, that's it. I was going to look into that. Let me show you. This problem was something we were actually trying to solve in one company we were in, working for. Uh, it seemed like they had configured, uh, um, uh, uh, you find the test environment, there's a link between test environment and the production environment. So a user within the tests can assess resource in production. That's pretty, pretty bad. It falls within this same idea of the business layer and the database. So it seemed like, seems like the test environment, the business layer, and the production environment business layer both sharing the same database. So anybody within the test can fetch information from the database because they can still share, but proper access control should be defined to restrict someone coming from a test ID to assess uh, a, 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 um, a data that is attached to production ID. So this is not loading up. I'm not sure if my browser is actually working now or is intercept on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Switch that off. <laughs> okay. So it's going to load now. So I was going to show you a code block that could fix that problem. So this looks like what we had. They are both linked together. So a solution to this, if you look at this, you can clearly segment this application so that you have the, the data access layer completely distinctive from the business access layer. Then other layers. Now, if they are completely, dis if the code blocks are different like this, it's not going to be possible for someone within this the, uh, maybe the business layer, a user here with an employee ID to assess a data that he has not been assigned to within this. If you look at this, you can see that the data have, have been assigned based on the employee's ID, employee's name, and employee's details. So this could be a possible solution to that code block. If you go back to our web application, you will see the code block is all one big block. See? Everything is just within the same code block. Pretty, pretty, pretty bad. So we could separate this. If we come here, maybe the database uh, uh, coming to where we find the employee profile, we can segment this area from this area as well as from this area. Proper segmentation will prevent a user from assessing where he's not supposed to be accessing. Okay, guys, I'm going to be stopping this lesson here for today. It's pretty long, I know. Uh, thanks for your patience, and um, see you soon again. Yeah, bye-bye.